little bit. Okay, all right, so the ice and downs. Remember I was saying I needed really three days to really get this, but it went real well this morning, and I explained on my first hour or so with you guys. Okay. We're going to start the, the basis of teaching how to create the dichotomous key. You guys did okay with the salamanders, didn't understand the fish thing, and we got plenty of time to do that. It's not due until like the first of next week, okay, and all that stuff. I'm not worried about that. The biggest thing is, since I only get to see you today, is getting you guys the understanding of how to create a dichotomous key. And trust me, it is very, very easy. So I literally need about, I'd say no more than eight minutes, maybe less than that, of your best attention here, okay? And staying with me on this, because I'm going to teach you, even though you're not really gonna start it today, but because you'll be at home tomorrow, Thursday, when you see the videos that I make with this, and you might even see this same one with you guys you know, on this side of it, I don't know which ones I'm gonna use, multiple ones, more is better. You'll go, oh yeah, I know what's going on. I refresh on this, Meyer told us, I explained it, okay, I know so. Okay, so why do we create dichotomous keys? Like I said yesterday on the ones that were created, is to identify organisms that have used the Linnaean system or the scientific naming Simple, a have, have not, or a yes, no question. You guys all agree with that? I mean, it really was. It's like asking you obvious scales, no scales, um, hind legs, this, that. And it's starting broad, just like the Linnaean system domain and going all the way down to a species, right? Okay. So here's the thing. When I did the clads, or you guys did the clads with me last week, and you did all those things, it didn't matter what organisms I gave you or whatever. You could take a group look at them and say, you know what, I can create outgroups, right? Okay, all right, and that's what we're going to be doing, all right? So I had to come up with a, a formula that is foolproof, and I'm telling you, this is foolproof. I'm a visual person, some of you guys, like I said, you know how animated I am and so on with this, but I tell you what, this is foolproof on simplest way of creating, learning how to make a dichotomous key, okay? And then once this grid or diagram is created, then all you have to do is simply take that grid and turn it into your key that you read, and it's it's done, okay? And I'll explain all that here, okay? All right, so fasten your seatbelts, here we go. Everybody ready? Okay, so from a hypothetical just talking here. I said this earlier, and I just kept the same letters up here. Let's say each of these letters, guys and gals, is a species. Okay, right? Well, I don't care if it's a tree or a salamander or a fish or whatever. A, C, E, G, J, O, and so on. So I got two, four, six, eight. I got 12 letters up there, right? Okay. You're going to be creating this stuff on these large pieces of paper. Okay, I'm going to give them to you to take home and so on. Okay, all right? So it's nice and easy to do. All right. So I sent Parker out. I sent Lil out, all you guys, and you went out and you collected these wild species of letters and you came back and they're laying on your tables. Okay. Plain and simple. And I'm looking at you and I say, all right, Ellie, we're going to create outgroups like we did that day in class. You're just simply going to look at these things and say, hmm, how can I separate them by just something visual? We all see. We can all do that, right, Miss Kay? All right, Will? So looking up here, this is written on top of my paper. It's no different if I had the tuna, the monkey. You remember we had the, the lamprey. I can separate those out. That's kind of what you did, a cladogram, but it's the same as creating a dichotomous key. Okay? So. I got this up at the top of my paper, and this is where I'm going to start working you through this stuff, and this is foolproof, and I came up with this, and I don't know if anybody's ever done this, but I should really patent this, because this is the second time in my 23 years I've come up with something that I thought, hmm, how can I get this across, and it's foolproof, and you can go back and change it and add to and not mess up, and I'm like, aha, so here it is. So I don't know if anybody has ever, I know this is the way you do it, but I don't know if anybody's ever taught it this way, so here we go. All right, so here's our letter. So here's what we do. Uh, everybody agree that we have to start with one every time, right? One, one A, one B, okay? So I put my little one there. I put, I, this is going to be my little A. This is going to be my B. So I'm looking at these letters, and I'm saying, what is a simple creating something that I know I can separate, whether it's this and that? And I know what I see because I'm the instructor. But right off the bat, would everybody agree if I could say thou? No thou, right? You guys see that? I'm like, well, yeah, that's an easy one. So if I said my rule 1A is it's a vowel, and my 1B is a no vowel, 
Everybody see how I create it, right? Okay, I'm seeing all nine heads. Good, good, good. So then we just then create a little box here. We create a little box here, one A, one B, and we just start. Okay, is A a vowel? Yep. C a vowel? No, because I'm here. E a vowel? Yes, A, E, I, O, U. G? No. J? No. O is? R? No. L? No. B? No. D? No. I? Yes. X? No. That's pretty easy, wasn't it? I just took eight and four and separated those as if they were species by a simple vowel or no vowel. Does everybody agree with what I wrote in those boxes? Yeah. Okay. And we're on our way. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter if I have a thousand or if I got 12. It's the same step every time. Keep it simple, right? Where I'm just saying, okay, Myers looking at this. He gave us saying, oh yeah. And you might've come up with something different. That's okay. There is no foolproof way or steps to do this as long as it makes sense. Parker might have been looking at something else. Lily, you might have seen something else here. That's fine. Did I divide into outgroups? As long as I can create two groups from what I had before, I'm going in the right direction. Okay, that's the key. All right. So now, everybody, I'm going to ignore this side because I'm systematic. I like to work top to bottom, left to right. Okay. So I'm going to do this. All right. This will be my two. 2A and 2B, and I'm going to ignore this group for right now. I'm just going to focus on these four, okay? And I'm going to create another out group, just like what I did, okay? So I'm looking at these letters, and I'm going, hmm, I see something right off the bat that I can, how I can do this. Um, how about straight lines, no straight lines? You see that one? That's a simple, like, well, yeah, that's, you see how simple it is, obvious. So I'm going to say straight lines. Obviously, my writings are kind of off because my head's running up. Straight lines, no straight lines, no straight lines. I'm just abbreviating. So, straight lines, yeah. A, E, straight lines, yeah. Straight lines, no. Uh, yeah. So look at that. Okay. Right off the bat, I took four of them and I created a legit step that I already separated out one of my species. Isn't this kind of the same way if you noticed on your fish one when it said the snake-like with the eel, how quick you identified that one with those scales? Same thing. I had four of them, I separated one out really quick. So right off the bat, of my 12 and a couple steps, I already got one legitimately identified, right? Everybody follow me? Okay. All right, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna just continue here. I'm gonna go right here. This is now my three, 3A, three 3B. Three so looking at those three letters, what is, what, is, what is something I can separate them? Be creative and think about it. I see something, I see a couple different ways I can separate at least one of them from the other two. Okay, anybody wanna make a suggestion? Anyway, of course I'm, I, I do this on, all right, you'll see this, but let's say three or less straight lines, four or more, right? Because you see one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. You see how I did that? I just, I just, on the go. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. So I said three or less straight lines, four or more. Okay. Pretty simple. All right. So A had three lines. So A is still over here. E had one, two, three, four. So E would be over here. And then I is over here. Wow. I just separated E from that too. So I got two down, 10 to go. Okay. So then I go, that one's done. So I'll make this my four. And shoot, this is easy. Anytime you get, you know, like that, I can be ex extremely descriptive. You know, I could say three lines, they're all sealed in, creating an inward pop, you know, like the A, you notice how, see how they're all connected? I could be real descriptive. Three lines with opens to the outside, you know, whatever it is, I can, you know what I mean? Because it's like the species. I'm all the way down to that. I can describe it down just like on the worksheet how it described the rock bass or the, the catfish. You know what I'm saying? When I got all the way down to separating two out, does that make sense, guys and gals, honestly? Okay. So whatever it is I write out here will be extremely descriptive, and that'll be my A, and that'll be my I. So look at that. In a matter of three or four minutes, we took four species and divided those down, clean out, right? All right. There's no set steps on to do it, but it took us four. Okay. So... 
Everybody agree, I finished out this whole side pretty fast, okay? And I'm being able to see this right here on my grid of paper, okay? So now what I do, I finished off with four, right? So I go back up here and I say, okay, this will be my five. Now I'm focused on these eight, and I'm gonna continue to do the same thing, right? You see, I mean, now we got this, I'm like, oh yeah, I got this. So can any of you, obviously I know, and it's okay, can any of you think of what, what, what would be something to do this one? Anybody? Anyone? Anyone? I know what I could say. I thought of the word arc. Arcs, no arcs, right? Like curvatures or curvatures or arcs, right? You see that? Oh, yeah, because I could say arc, no arc in the letters or whatever. You know, like I said, I'm being simple. I'm being creative. But is it separating them out? Yes, it is. Okay? You could have come up with something. You might have been thinking something similar, but that's okay as long as you keep separate them out. So, do you, do, would everybody see C has arcs in it? Yeah. Does G have curves and arcs? Yeah. J does? Yeah. R does, there's a little curve venture to it. L, no, that's straight as an arrow. V has curves. D has curves, but X has straight lines. Look at that, I took eight of them and went, went six and two. Pretty simple, okay? So here's, here's, here's the thing. I like to still stay left to right, top to bottom. So obviously I know one more step and I'll finish up L and X, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and stay right here and I still like working, so this is five, this will be six, six A, six B, okay? Here, 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 okay? So looking at these six letters, I gotta come up with something creative again, all right? Whatever it might be. Um, you could say two, one, two lines or less, like this would be cons consecutive, one, two, I'm sorry, one, this would be one, two, you know what I'm saying, like that, or I could say one, two, one, two, or something. I can get creative. You, you follow me here now, however you can do that stuff, I just wanted to jump ahead. Let's say I came out with something here, everybody's with me because it's the same thing. Let's say I separated out C, G, and D, and left me with J, R, and V, and then I went here again and separated out, and this would have been, say, 7, A, and V, okay? And whatever, the, whatever it is I come up with this, you know, maybe it's sealed all the way, whatever it might be, put D here and C here. I'm not jumping over, but you follow me, I'm just kind of speeding, you see what I'm doing though? I mean, whatever it is you come up with, you're separating those out, okay? Everybody still, want, even though I just kind of jumped in, I'm not coming up with something solid. I'm just trying to move faster ahead. So what I'm getting at is, I would continue this out, C, G, D, this and that, and then I finish this one. Then I'd say, okay, what was my last number here? Then I would just come up to my next little grid here. This would be eight, because I finished off with seven. The reason we do this, people, think about it. If I tried to create this without this grid, and you're like flowing this and that, all of a sudden you forget a step, you're like, oh my gosh. Now I gotta go back and erase. Now I gotta go back and do this, okay? This grid, you see it, it's so much easier to not miss that, that, that extra step. Does that make sense, okay? All right, so what I'm getting at is, then I would finish this out, okay? Or, you know, whatever, but whatever it is, is when I finish something out, you always make sure you go to the next number, okay? So let's say this would have finished that. This would have been, would have taken a couple steps here because I got three letters. Let's say this was J, R, and B. Eight, this would have been nine. Nine would have finished out R and B. Whatever clues I come up with, okay? All right, hope stay with me. So then let's say if that had been nine, what would this letter be? If nine was my last one I used, what would this one be? 10, yeah, and so, so I'm saying systematically, I'm staying in order, okay? So then I would have finished the 10 and so on. So then I finished that up, so however many steps it was to get them all individually down to this like the species, just like the name of the, the blue catfish or the rock bass or whatever it is, right? You guys follow me, okay? It may take you 20 steps, it may take you 18, it may take you 30, that's okay. Everybody's different as long as it makes sense, all right? Not one dichotomous key is the right way of doing it or the only way of doing it, all right? It's what you see and how you create the field guide, all right? As long as it makes sense. So then 
after I would do this, you're done with the hard part, okay? Because then what you're gonna do is take your normal piece of paper, which is what you used here, and you're gonna create the dichotomous key that you already, you're gonna read your grid, and you're gonna say, oh, here's my 1A and my 1, I'm gonna get a better pen here. I'm gonna make my 1A and my 1B, and I'm gonna say, oh, 1A was vowel, 1B was no vowels, and I do my dot, 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 dot. Well, 1A went to two, right? 1B went to five. Then I will take my two, and I'd write my 2A, 2B. My clue was straight lines, straight lines, no straight lines. 2A went to three. 2B finished off and was letter O. I write out, just like I'd write out the species, follow me? Then I do my 3A, 3B. Then, and here I have this nice, systematic one to whatever letter I finished, A and B. Where did I go? When did I finish? When I'm all done with taking this and putting it in my dichotomous key, I should have every individual species or every letter over here, individual all down to 12 of them. Like I said, it might be 15 steps, it might be 18 steps, it might be 12 steps, it doesn't matter. Then you just say to yourself, let's see if I did it right. I'll pick a random letter, start at 1A, 1B, and answer it just like I would as, a, as like you did with the fish and the salamander. And if I get down to my letter and did it right, oh, I did it right. Check it one other time, check a couple of your letters, and you're spot on and you did it, okay? Does that make sense? Because if you try to create this first, you're gonna forget something, and that's why I always figure out, I'm like, how can I come up? So I made this, we're just gonna make a giant tree, a big diagram. We can see it, we can add, and it's easier not to miss. You see how it, you're not gonna miss any letters, you're not gonna miss any organisms, okay, or whatever, because it's all, and you know, if I finish them out, finish them out, finish it out, finish, finish, and you see, and you look through, and all of them are accounted for, then you know you're done. And that's what you check before you write this out. Everybody follow me on that, okay? So, you create the perfect one, you did all right, and all of a sudden I throw you a curveball and I said, hey, put, all of a sudden you got species P. Ooh, but I created my dichotomous key, Meyer. That's okay. You would take species P and you look at your diagram and you'd say, okay, if P's up here, is it a vowel? No, it would be one B. Then I would go here, and I would track it all the way through until let's say it went this way, no arc, okay, or have arc. Well, let's, I tell you what, let's say it went this. Let's say it was T. Did I used T? No, I didn't. So T is non-vowel, and it went 5B, and it, T should have been over here. Everybody agree, because it would have been no arcs, okay? So all of a sudden, now I've got three letters over here, and let's say before I had, um, 10, and this would, this would have been number, another 10A, 10B, and before it was just L and X by itself. You with me? It's easy to say, okay, now I've got an extra T in there. I've got to change my 10A and B to create an out group, right? Does that make sense? And that's easy. I can just go back on that one line and change it, whatever I think works here, all right? And then I would say, okay, so 10A would have went to a different number, okay? Let's say, let's say it now was, let's say now, looks like L and T. Let's say it was uh, no crossing lines, crossing lines, right? That makes sense, right, because I got an X. You see how I did that? And let's say now that 10A just finished out to be X, right? So I go back over here and say 10A. Oh, and maybe it, it said before, but I just have to change the clue and it say letter X, right? 10B, which is right below it, I would then have to go, okay, I gotta come up with two separate clues for that. What was the last number at the bottom of my grid when I did this before P was thrown at me? Does that make sense? So I'd say, let's say it was 25, follow me? I was just, oh, okay. So now I'm gonna just gonna create 25A and B, 
because I'm staying over here because this is my scratch paper. This is my rough draft. And then I would separate out L and T descriptively, right? I didn't mess up this grid, right? I just cleaned up number 10. I go all the way down at the bottom to 25, which was my next new letter. And I write 25, 20, 25 A and B, letter T, letter L, letter T. So I didn't mess up my dichotomous key. I added in a new species just by reading this right. You see how I did that? You see how you can do that? Because if I didn't have this, it would be really hard to try and figure that out in here. You would get really confused. So the key is this. When you do this the right way, you can add stuff into it the rest of your life. You know, you can find new species all the time and plug it in. So that's why dichotomous keys work. I mean, we're finding new species all the time, or we were cleaning up and recategorizing them all the time. So that is why you don't see that part, but the keys, like from the salamanders and stuff, I guarantee there was a scientist that had large tables or large grids or maybe whiteboard, and they were doing this. This goes over here, this goes over here. And then once they had it all nice and organized or added something, they created the key. Does that make sense? Yeah, awesome, you're all nodding your heads, okay? Very good, okay? So it doesn't matter, this could be plants. This could be our fish again. This could be uh, salamanders. This could be whatever, okay? So this leads me to the next thing. I am going to create the pictures and the videos for you. Before you leave, you're gonna take a couple of these sheets home with you so you have these nice big papers, if you need them, to create this while you're home because after that, I won't see you for three or four days, right? Okay, that's why I had to have you guys in front to see the examples because I, I did not want to make the video when you guys go, okay, I get it, but the dog's barking, mom walks in the room, I'm kind of tired, I spaced off for three minutes. Oh man, I missed half the lecture. Now I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I'm gonna go watch TV. You know, it happens, right? It happens, you're like, wow, is he like in my brain psychic? No, it's just, it, that's what happens, okay? So, I'm going to post all this stuff later tonight or tomorrow up here, and, and I'm also still available. Here's what you're gonna be doing. Dun, 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 dun. You have these wild species, and these pictures are gonna be nice and clear. You're going to create a dichotomous key with shoes. And you're going, Meyer, those are the, some of the ugliest shoes I've ever seen in my life. Let me tell you the history of this. Years ago when we did this lab with you guys, I used to have you guys take off a shoe. Okay? And then you take off a shoe and you put them up on the front of the room. And I'd have 30 of you in here, 25 of you, a full normal class, normal year. Okay? And you would start, after I taught this, you would start creating, looking up at the shoes, and start doing it. And it would take at least two days. Well, then the next day it would come in, we'd go to do it. Some of you'd be absent. Some of you'd wear different shoes. And it always messed it all up. So I thought to myself, how can I create this cool lab the same way? So I had an awesome CA years ago, and she was one heck of a baker too. Okay. And she goes, I'm a photographer. She goes, you know, Meyer? I go, let me go to the mall and take pictures of shoes. I go, you do that? She goes, yeah. So she went out to the Independent Center. This was 10, 12 years ago. And I said, just take me 20, 30 cool, just random shoes. Man, she had a blast. She was going in, told them that. She was taking uh, these pictures, which you see here. Kind of number them. And she put them on this, this trifold for me and everything. Okay? And she put it on there and she numbered them. And then I was like, man, this is perfect. Because think about it. Just like the letters, I'm sitting here, and you guys aren't messing with this at all today. And I think I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I'm going to go ahead and stop this because I think we're good with this, and then I'm going to add something new. So don't get too long.